By popular vote, the winner of the Minecon 2017 contest was Mob B, a ray light creature that can fly through the air. Work has begun, but we still know very little on how this mob behaves or where it even slots into the game as a whole. Though that said, we've got a couple minutes, why don't we come up with something ourselves? I'm Simply Sark and welcome, this is the Monster of the Night Sky, a suggestion. Night, Flight, and Light. This unique new mob affects all three of these gameplay mechanics, rebalancing some that have become a little overpowered. We'll start with night, or sleep. Many players enjoy using sleep as a means to avoid interruption, especially when building. Other nefarious characters see it as an easy escape route, a cheap tactic to avoid the night, and of course, its dangers. The monster of the night sky can balance this by spawning as a consequence of inconsistent sleeping habits. Players who sleep fairly regularly in an established, familiar bed remain unaffected. However, deviants who sleep erratically in temporary placed beds will soon encounter a nightmare. Drifting down from the heavens, this frightening foe will hunt down and follow the sleep deprived, for only they can see, interact and be attacked by the mob. The monster of the night sky is a special illusory mob that represents insanity. Those being tormented will appear crazed, fighting imaginary beings that seemingly aren't there. Insomnia forces them to wait out the night. We next look at Flight, and it just so happens to be this monster's speciality. Elytra are a bit too powerful. They grant the player unrivaled mobility and freedom of movement. Rather than nerf this well-loved feature, the monster will instead try to beat the player at their own game. Anyone hanging around too high for too long risks spawning the monster. See, the monster of the night sky doesn't just fly. It glides, soars, and plunges. Its range of mobility is second only to that of a skilled elytra bearer. It's this elytra mimicking ability that allows it to match not only our speed and movement, but also pursue us like nothing else can. This mob, however, can do more than just tail us. It has a few special moves that make it a serious danger. The first is that it will try to flank you from the sides, ramming straight through your physical body and biting away at your health. As this monster is something of a phantom, this attack does not inflict any knockback. Therefore, the player must keep a vigilant eye on their health bar, lest it drops to zero without them ever noticing. Mountaineers and hikers beware. Anyone wandering high hills and cliffs at night might just be blown away by the monster. It'll direct strong gusts of wind towards you, trying to push you into a fatal fall. This monster prefers battling in the skies. Or you're minding your own business, cruising along, seeing where the breeze takes you. But you're also not paying attention to what's been following you. This is when you'll encounter this mob's most frightening move. It's called Turbulence, and anyone foolish enough to allow the monster to execute it will almost certainly come to a sticky end. If the player doesn't keep enough distance between themselves and the monster, it may inflict them with Turbulence. This status effect, which lasts 10 seconds, will scramble and interfere with your elytra, making controlling them difficult. If you're unable to counteract the effect, you risk a serious collision. As fearsome as this monster is, it of course has a few exploitable weaknesses. The first is that despite its mastery of mobility and flashy maneuvers, it does not have the same dexterity as that of a skilled player. Sudden obstacles can catch them out, so aim for complex routes. It will either divert its course, or remember why it's the monster of the night sky. We next look at light. To balance this mob out, it needs an Achilles heel, a major vulnerability. 
Originating from darkness and madness, this monster is considerably more susceptible to light than other beings. If the mob gets too close or is lured into a light source, it will be temporarily stunned and immobilized. At this point, it will be weakened and particularly vulnerable to attack. As dawn breaks and the light of a new day pushes back the pillar of darkness, the monster flees, desperate not to let it make contact. If torches stun this mob, then sunlight decimates it completely. Unlike other mobs, it does not burn. It simply decays away, back into nothingness. For the night was long, but the terrors passed. I've been Simply Sark, and thank you for watching.